Here comes Nick Folk. And now he's going for his 13th all-time game-winning kick from 41 yards. Ryan Stonehouse to hold. And the kick. Yes! 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 Let's go, yes! go! Yes! 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 man! You set a key all week to get the drive stop. Sometimes it was sooner, sometimes it was later, but you got to stop. Hell of a job, leadership. Hell of a job. We can bring these young guys along, bring these new guys along. Okay, and we're going to get it hot. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by SeatGeek with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Titans even the record at 1-1 one one with a 27-24 overtime victory over the Chargers. Exciting football game. Both teams made a lot of good plays, but you guys just kept punching and in the end able to win it in OT. Yeah, there was never any mistakes that really hurt us. You know, we were able to... You know, like we said, they heard me there talk, get the drive stops with these guys. I mean, it's a really good offense, a football team. Um, I thought our offense really came alive when it had to. I mean, there were some times where we had some three and outs. I thought our kicking game, you know, did just enough. You know, I mean, Stoney gave us some, some great punts. We caught every punt, mo no more critical than the last one there that, that got us the first first down. I mean, you know, J.K. Scott wasn't giving up many returns and, um, we got a big one there, and then we were able to have a couple huge plays, just enough there to get in there. Nick Folk was able to give us his 13th career game winner. All right, let's take a look at the plays of the game. We call it the Mike Vrabel Six Pack. It is presented by Seat Geek. And let's look at the longest catch of Traylon Burke's career to this point. This got it jump started. Mike. Well, you see the protection, you know what I mean? And, and we're able to just climb the pocket, and, and Traylon's able to, to run past uh, Samuel. and. You know, really, it, we we were on life support here, and and this one this one got us going. Uh, but we need these X, pl X plays. It's hard to drive the football 12 and 13 plays in this league, and so you know Ryan and the protection and everybody held up, and, and Berksy ran by him, and you know was able to run underneath the catch. So many of these is possible, Mike. Well, when you have been successful offensively in 19, 20, 21 in particular. Those shot plays off play action have been so effective, and it's it's really been a, a bread and butter part of your success offensively. Well, as those guys start to creep down and creep down, you know we're going to have to run by them and, and give our guys a, a chance to go make a play. If you know about the option, if you remember the old option play, this one was run to perfection. Not many guys could do it like Ryan Tannehill did it in the third quarter. The old veer, and uh, again, when he comes out there, you know we're reading the. You know, ends up having the post safety there, who was the quarterback player, and and Ryan gave it a little, a little flip, and and got him going. And you know, this has got to be a part of our offense. And you know, would rather him not take the face mask and the hit there by Murray, but in the end, that's one of the toughest players on our football team is Ryan, and and he'll do whatever he has to to get it in the end zone for and us. Derek is still in pitch position too. That if Ryan decided to flip it to him at the five. He's still in a position he could do that. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, uh, that's the, the runner's responsibility to stay in phase and making sure that they're available to get the football and, and catch it cleanly. How about another deep shot in the fourth quarter? First career catch with the Titans for Chris Moore, 49 well, yards. Yeah, you know, he's had a really good, you know, had a good training camp, uh, played a lot of positions for us, played special teams, had a great week of practice, was running all week, and, uh, this is what, you know, I mean, quarterback and everybody else felt confident about throwing him this football. And, you know, you could see him go fight through contact and, and bring it in. So excited about what Chris can do going forward here to help us. That sets up a touchdown. Titans go up 24-21. But guess what? Right back down the field come the Chargers. They have the ball at the Titans' seven-yard line, third and short. And here's Harold Land. Well, we were able to execute a game inside and get into the middle of the pocket. And, you know, he's looking to try to, you know, when they pump, if we can make them pump the ball, the pass rush has to be there. So if you're evaluating what we're doing in the pass rush, if the quarterback pumps and tries to come back and go somewhere else, you know, 
we have to be there. So that's an example of us being there when the quarterback pumped it and trying to go somewhere else. In overtime, the Titans get a three and out with a big assist from the crowd, get the ball back, and the first play, something you had schemed up well. Well, you know, I really appreciate the communication from J.O. upstairs, Justin Outen to Tim, and saying, hey, we'd held this one. I think now is the right time, and you can see Dre getting out there. We get a seal, get a couple seals, and we get the, the big lineman out there on the corner, and, you know, it's a quick 14 yards. And, you know, we're going to keep blocking for Tajay because when we do, uh, we're going to gain some yards. All right, so the Titans move the ball to the 37-yard line of the Chargers. Derrick Henry picking up a big third and short. And the next play, setting it up for the field goal. Well, you know, I love the execution here. You know, we're able to get Ryan outside of the pocket. We're able to use the sidelines. You know, Hop does a great job getting to his depth. Uh, protection is there where it needs to be. They're pressuring. And... Uh, you know, I mean, just a huge, perfectly timed call and even better execution. Well, they're expecting, I think, Eddie Joy, I should say, they're expecting Derrick Henry to run the football. Yeah, we can give it to Eddie, too, if you he shows up, but yes. we'll give it to Derrick as well. But that was, uh, <laughs> that was great execution there with Ryan, something that we practiced all week. Now, Eddie, if you're available, just let Come us on know. out. Yeah, just come on out. Overall, though, this football team finds a way to do it. Offense, defense, special teams. Getting ready to go back to work tomorrow, we think there'll be more pep in their step. Yeah, I hope so. You know, I mean, we have to start off better than we did last week. Uh, and, I, you know, that'll be on me to make sure that we change some things and we're figuring out, you know, it's going to be a whole new challenge and going on the road. But, you know, we executed a lot more keys this past week than, than we did in, uh, in New Orleans. Coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek, it's time to head to the Telestrator with the head coach. Some film study next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio, the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. Time for a little film study. And one of the real keys for the Titans in the win over the Chargers, getting them off the field on third down. They did it with some pressure. And on this particular play, it's time for Jeffrey Simmons to help get them off the field on so, third down. As you mentioned, Mike, we talked about getting the drive stop. That was something that we talked to our defense about, whether that was third down fourth down, or ultimately if they were able to enter into the red zone. So it felt like the guys really embraced that and said, okay, we're going to start on third down, weren't great on fourth down, but we were able to, when we needed it, have some stops in the red zone. This is an example of some of the stuff that we did on third down. Um, starting out here, you're going to see we got six guys at the line of scrimmage. We've got our defensive linemen. You know, we've got some of our coverage guys, our linebackers, our safeties up in there. You know, looking at these guys having five offensive linemen to block and then usually inserting the running back somewhere in there. You know, we'll do a lot of different things out of this. You know, we'll be able to rush six. We'll bring seven. Uh, sometimes we bring three. So we're always just trying to change up who we're bringing uh, and giving the quarterback and, and especially these offensive linemen uh, different looks and forcing the back to scan, uh, play man out of this, can play some zone. Um, as we work our way through here, you're, you're going to see. There you go. Okay, as we work our way through here, guys doing a nice job. Everybody's selling it. You don't know who's coming. Ultimately, you can see the linemen's heads are turning and there's some indecision. Uh, the speed there by Jeffrey getting off the football, getting here. And then, most importantly, is the coverage marries with the pass rush. So, there's us in this particular case. In a zone, we could take it back. We can look at the quarterback when he's ready to throw the football. You can see here, he's looking down here. Guys are matched up here. When he progresses through to the backside, Elijah's where he needs to be. And then we'll roll it again. And you'll see Jeffrey from the backside here. You'll see the pass rush where we talk about, about working your hands. So if you're the quarterback or you're the running back, you can see he's scanning different places. Right, the offensive linemen are having to key the ball on the road. He's looking at protection. They're pointing 24 is the mic. Okay, so the back's looking. But here you can see Jeffrey talk about working hands, right? Swiping, reducing surface area. And the next time this ball is going to come out. We're going to get this football out the next time. Arden does a good job selling it with speed so the tackle can't help. That's how you beat a three-man side right there with, the, with the, what we would call a TE game, a tackle, 
up the field, and then the end wrapping. I love, so I love watching that. That's good stuff. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, huge third down stop. You know, what I mean, we you, we know what our expectations are on third down, two of fourteen. We got to get this fourth down figured out. So we'll, we'll go back and we'll emphasize it and understand that you know maybe we're seeing some different plays. I mean, we'll get a great short yardage stop, but then you know they convert it on fourth and one. But longer yardage means more pressure and more opportunities to affect the quarterback. When we come back, it's the epic Western spotlight. Nick Folk gets a quiz. Stay with us on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by C. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek. Nick Folk had the game-winning field goal last Sunday, and the Titans have certainly enjoyed having the veteran kicker as part of the roster already. He's seven for seven. When the Titans traded with New England for him and we started doing research on Nick Folk, we looked at him in the 2007 NFL draft and found that that draft was quite an interesting one for a lot of reasons. So we wondered, what does Nick Folk know about his own draft from 2007? In our epic Western spotlight, we quiz the kicker, Nick Folk. Nick Folk, drafted in 2007. Do you remember what pick you were in the 2007 draft? One of two. 172 or 176? I don't remember off the top of my head. 178. Ugh. Okay, so are you ready for the first question? Okay. All right. Who was the first overall pick in the 2007 NFL draft? Jamarcus Russell played LSU in 06. At Arizona went to LSU and we had to play them and they were stacked. They had, I think, maybe five first round picks that year from LSU. So, so this is an Arizona related question. Number two. Who was your former Arizona teammate selected 50th overall in the 2007 draft by the Tennessee Titans? Chris Henry, running back. Very good. Uh -huh. You know what he was most famous for here? Do you remember the Daryl Reed hit? In the Colts game on the kickoff return? Uh, yeah, I, I think I, knew, I, just, I remember vaguely and he fumbled, didn't he? No, he held on. He held on to it, okay. But I remember that, yeah. All right, final question. Name the three players from the 2007 NFL Draft who have already been enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm going to go in order of the way they were drafted, because I remember this. Megatron. Megatron. Calvin Johnson. Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas. Darrell Revis. Darrell Revis. Pretty amazing when you consider it hasn't been that long ago, and three guys are already in camp. It's it's wild to think about. And I played with Darrell in New York, um, and us to you know to kind of think about. He had obviously a really great career, and where we are now, I'm still playing, and some of these guys are in the Hall of Fame. It's uh, and there's a five-year buffer for the Hall of Fame, and so it's it's impressive to you know to have played with some guys who you were drafted with in the same class, and um, they're already in the Hall of Fame. Nick Folk, pretty good job on the on the quiz for your draft year, 2007. Thank you, I appreciate that. Good stuff from Nick Folk, Mike Vrabel. That's some that's some good knowledge from the kicker. You were picked in 1997. Do you remember what number you were? What number selection you were? I was 91. You were 91. I was a compensatory pick. You were. Back when you couldn't trade them. Look, I've got some questions okay. for you. I love a game show. Who was the first pick in the 1997 NFL draft? That was the pride of the Sandusky Blue Streaks, Orlando Pace. That is correct. The Tennessee Oilers selected a Big Ten wide receiver Seven picks after you at number 98. Can you name him? Great career. Uh, D. Mason, Derek Mason, right? Leading receiver in Titans history, Great Derek career. Mason. Five members of your draft oh. class are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Can you name them? Probably not. Orlando Pace. One. Oh, man. Um, I don't know, buddy. You ready? Yep. Walter Jones. Yep. Tony Gonzalez. Yep. And then two from your third round, Rondé Barber and Jared, Jason Taylor. Jason Taylor, yep, and Barber. Well, you did pretty well. Not, Not as well, well as Nick Folk. No. But uh, that was pretty good. kicker. I had more time on my hands. Did you know kicker went one pick in front of you? Brett Conway? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Kind of we come back, I mean, if you think these questions are good, we've got a 12-year-old who has a great question for Mike Vrabel when we come back next. Stay with us. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seeky. The 
The Mike Vrabel Show continues from the Bet MGM studio. This program presented by Seat Geek. It's time for Kids Ask Coach Vrabel. Last week, you loved Emmett's question. I thought that's what we were doing right here. It's actually somebody, another kid. Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> a little bitter about the quiz, huh? <laughs> Kicker, Maybe. kicker thing got to you a little yeah, bit there. Thing. A little kicker went a little 90. testy. Okay. Uh, this is Parker, and Parker has the question as kids ask Coach Vrabel. Let's hear it, Parker. Hi, Coach Vrabel. My name is Parker, 12 years old from Thompson Station. What is it like being at the draft, and what is it like drafting all those players? Thank you. You've done both. You've been drafted. Yeah, never been to the draft. But uh, I think a big misconception by fans is that we actually don't go to the draft, right? Everything is done here from St. Thomas Sports Park. There are representatives, or there used to be representatives that would go. They would sit at the table. They would pick up the phone. The helmet phone. The helmet phone. Yes. And it was always a lot of excitement. But though we're not actually... You know, the coaches and the personnel department, they're not actually at the draft. Now, we were close when it was here, but everything is done from there. Uh, it is, it's great to add good young players to, to our roster. You know, I think that's the exciting part. Uh, coaches put a lot of time into it. Obviously, the, you know, Rand and his staff put a ton of time into it. Uh, the post-draft, I mean, we've added roster, uh, players, a lot of young players to our roster this year uh, that are coming out of college. So. Uh, it's always exciting you know, to get to know them and then continue to add them to your team and, and get to know them at a, at a greater level. The draft night wave was a social media phenomenon. Do you expect to continue doing that? In I, I mean, it's just like the, I mean, the, the, the camera's just right there, and it's like you pick, and it's like, you, you know, it's like, what else are you going to do? You know, just, so you did that in place of, like, everybody hugging each other? After yeah, the, you know, just, I mean, it's just kind like, of a new I twist. Not a, big hugger at that point in time, you know. But it's like, <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was like, hey, guys. Hey, what's happening? Well, that's good stuff. Hey, nice job, Parker. Great question. Uh, Emmett and Parker have gotten us off to a good start in this. And Mike's not doing bad either. The Nissan Keys to Success up next on the Mike Vrabel Show from the Bed MGM Studio presented by SeatGeek. Stay tuned. Time for the Nissan Keys to Success. Titans going to play at Cleveland this Sunday. Cleveland also 1-1 one one after falling to Pittsburgh last night, 26-22. Key number one, create field position on special teams. Yeah, well, coming into this game after two games, Cleveland's starting their drives at the 34-yard line, and their opponents are starting at 25. So that's a significant number uh, when you look at it over the course of a football game. We have to be able to... Uh, continue to cover punts and, and maybe continue to to do it a little bit better. And if we have to cover kickoffs, uh, do that. And we need we need to find a return. You know, what I mean, we got to if they give us a chance to to return one kickoff return, we got to nail it. Uh, and then hopefully we can make them punt and, and we can get a 20 yard return that maybe could could set up some field position. Nissan key number two. Don't let their defensive line wreck the game. They got. Great players, and they, uh, you know, Schwartz, he's got them coming, and they're they're penetrating and they're attacking. It's a fast defense, but up front, you know, we we've got to make sure that we're we're, we're getting into these guys and that they're not, uh, you know, that we're not loose in our combinations and that they're not in the backfield before we can we can get the ball handed off or progress through in a in a pass concept, whatever it may be. But we've got some guys that, you know, really good players. Obviously, Miles Garrett. You know, Smith, uh, you know, inside Tomlinson and Shelby, and, and it just they keep rolling guys at you, you know, Mo Hurst and um, one, one after another. So it's going to be critical uh, for us to be able to stand up and, and block these guys up front. Final Nissan key, create turnovers on defense. It, it's hard to win a football game and not create a turnover. Uh, it, it's, you know, it just puts pressure on you to, to – Get off the field on third down or do what we did last week, be, you know, two of five in, in the red zone and hold them to two of five. But you know, we're going to have some chances, I think. You know, Deshaun is, is a dynamic player, but he also is going to hold the football. He's also going to try to 
to, to scramble and create plays off the spot. And uh, those are opportunities to, to get the football. And we're going to have to take advantage and of it. And you've been close. You've had some opportunities. It, it'll happen. I, I certainly hope so. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right. Titans and the Browns coming up this Sunday at Cleveland Browns Stadium. Kickoff is set for 12.02. Titans Radio hits the air with the award-winning Titans countdown at 11 a.m. Central on 104.5 The Zone and other Titans Radio stations throughout the region. Titans and the Browns this Sunday. Hard to believe that it is already week three of the NFL season. So for Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Mike.